in an effort to convince you that riding in cold, snowy, generally unrideable cycling conditions, I knew I was gonna need to pull out all the stops. So I was thinking of a guy that has raced at the Pro Tour level that let out some of the biggest riders in the world in sprint finishes and big races. Uh, a guy that's won gravel races all over the world and someone that lives in pretty gnarly, nasty, cold conditions himself. That person happens to be sitting right next to me. <laughs> Ted King, welcome. We meet again in completely different time of the year and conditions. <laughs> you know it, yeah, welcome to Stowe, Vermont. We're about, oh, 15, 20 miles down the road from where I live in Vermont. Um, and we're here at Ranch Camp, which is a super cool bike shop, restaurant, bar. And then right behind us is uh, some awesome fat biking. So I want to take you out and, and show you around. That's awesome. Yeah, we were talking earlier in the year and I was saying that when it gets snowy and nasty out, you're going to need to take me on a fat bike ride. I've seen you out there shredding around, doing a lot of training on your fat bike. And I knew that this was one of the ways that you stayed in shape. I just did a video with Tim Johnson where he took me skiing. I know nice. that that's part of your training regimen as well. But uh, tell us a little bit about maybe your experience in this. You've done a huge ride last year. We talked about it in the last video that we did called the James, I think you called it the James Bay Descent. Exactly right. Yeah, James Bay Descent was the brainchild of former professional bike racer Buck Miller, uh, Canadian himself, and then he and two other buddies. They invited me on this pretty crazy trip, which is 650 kilometers down the west hand coast of the James Bay in northern Canada. The northernmost trip, part of the trip, uh, we hit the Nunavut Islands, which are technically the Arctic. It is the, the least inhabited and furthest north province of Canada. Um, yeah, it ended up being 10 days. It was it was super cool. It's given me a big better perspective of life in general and what like what is uncomfortable. <laughs> what are you doing this winter? You wanna those guys are actually going on another trip. <laughs> oh. I was invited, but coincidentally my daughter is due, due about uh, the exact same time they're departing. I said, yeah. fellas, sorry I can't pull this one off. Yeah, definitely. I'm not sure what the date is, but I definitely have something going yeah, on. Yeah, well, yeah. okay, I'll let them know. Yeah. Um, okay. It's gonna be a hoot. <laughs> we're gonna take a look at all your bike and your equipment and everything like that, and then we're gonna hit the trails. Let's eat some, uh, some lunch, and then let's hit it. Beautiful, I like it. Let's walk through this Cannondale fat bike. Let's see what your machine's all about. Right on. So right here, you got the Cannondale Fat Cad 1, indicating that it has the Olaf fork. Fork, of course, meaning the lefty, so only just one peg over here. Uh, super durable, overbuilt, but, but wonderfully light and amazing for when you're gonna be ripping through some more technical fat bike stuff. Uh, let's look at the rubber. We have the 45 North Dillinger 5s. Five referring to five inches of width. But what's super cool about these and what I love about them is the spikes. They are a studded tire. So that is gonna be opportune when you're riding on super slippery stuff. What else? Let's look up here in the Pogi department. 45 North has these hand warmer doohickeys. Uh, Pogi, I believe, is a term that, that my friends in Canada were using during the fat bike adventure. Uh, yes, these are actually called the Cobra Fist. It's plush, man. It's like. It's like sticking your hand in a, in a, I don't know, a nice down parka. Yeah. But it's freaking outstanding. Yeah. So, you know, full dexterity. I know some people can be hesitant to put their hands in there knowing that, that you might be prone to fall off a bike and then have your hands be stuck in there. Never been an issue, is not an issue. It's nothing but warmth and comfort up here. Uh, another key accoutrement right here in the water bottle department. Bring a thermal bottle. It's cold outside. No matter if you have drink mix or just water, it's gonna be freezing up. So I throw some warm water in there with a little bit of Maple Aid. Delicious. Okay. Uh, let's look at the drivetrain. We got a 30 tooth chain ring up front, and then I'm running an Eagle 1050 cassette in the rear. Fat biking is a slow sport. We are going at very low speeds. What's really cool about having such wide tires is you're doing a lot of really low speed, high dexterity maneuvers that you wouldn't be able to pull off on a traditional mountain bike. So yeah, you are, I'm, I'm using my 50 right. all the time, especially around here where we have some really undulating terrain. The sun sometimes sets around 4.30 in the afternoon, or we say 4.30 at night around here. So 
I have some really powerful lights up here that I'm very pleased with. It's a Blackbird Countdown 1600 up front. Super powerful light, and plus there's a timer, which is awesome, so I see how much time I have left. Uh, it's a cyclic rear, so there's a camera back there, just in case I wanna catch, catch you on camera. <laughs> but yes, lights are key, especially this time of year when, when the sun is not going to be abundant. Up top, regular helmet, something on, on your ears, definitely wanna cover up there so there's no like little bits sticking out getting frostbit. Indeed, you see a, a handful of folks when it's super cold using um, their favorite ski helmet. Yeah. Totally fine, great idea. But you know, I run a standard helmet with a, uh, a winter cycling cap so it goes up over your ears. It's thermal, it's nice and warm, it's toasty, it's stylish. And then just in case the sun's out, you got a little flap up front. Uh, and then let's talk about, you have a, a unique pump because these tires have a whole thing going on. Very low pressure, but a lot of volume. Accurate, accurate. So two things going on here, right? Here is a high volume mountain bike pump, which is key when you know that you're not gonna have, you know, a CO2 might not fill you up. You're in the middle of nowhere. I am running uh, a low temperature sealant, which I do highly recommend. It is rare that you need this, but when you need this, you really need this. Another cool thing to talk about while we're on the topic of air is the cork tire whiz. Okay. So that there knows the, the air pressure of your tire down to a 10th of a PSI. It hooks up Bluetooth with, your, with an app on your phone. And so you'll, you can set a range. So my range is from four pounds to seven pounds. If it is above that range, it's gonna flash quickly red. If it's within that range, it flashes a peaceful green. And then below is a slow red. So I'll know how to, how to uh, adjust my tire pressures accordingly, whether the app is out and my hands are getting a little bit cold or just by looking at it when, when it's absolutely freezing. Okay, it's pretty low pressure, but because these tires are so wide and everything like that, I have no idea what I have in mind because I haven't really ridden a fat bike very much, but we go uh, low is key. Low is key, and that's what's super cool about fat biking. If we rode yesterday when it was fresh, pillowy champagne powder, it would be super hard to ride. Whereas now we've had an overnight chill, it, it precipitated a little bit of uh, 33-ish degree precipitation. So right now this is hard pack, like you could run a, actually pretty high pressure on this. Okay. Whereas yesterday you would have been like down to, to two, three PSI. Ted, let's talk about what you wear. I know when you're out there, there's probably like an opportunity to make an igloo or something like that, but that's not the case when you're out riding your fat bike. No, you want to uh, always be moving because in temperatures like these, you'll see us dancing around right now because as long as you're moving, you're gonna stay warm. As long as you're pedaling, you're gonna stay warm. And so as a result, you don't actually wear a ton of clothing. Um, I find that layering is absolutely key. So, you know, you got your, your thermal tights down below and then a nice base layer. As always, welcome to New Age Cycling. You need to have some sort of neck wear to keep your neck warm. Gloves, when you have your hands in these Cobra fists, all sorts of different thickness gloves will keep you nice and warm. It's gotta be super duper cold for you to throw on the big dogs. So you can be wearing like a nice set of woolies and your hands are warm by and large throughout the day. Got it. Keeping the old feet warm is a very important aspect. Some people have good blood flow, some people have less good blood flow in their feet. Where do you fall in that spectrum? I fall in the freezing cold hands and feet category. So first things first, if I know it's cold outside, I crack open my chemical toe warmers and I put those directly on the sock. And then from there you put your shoe on. So your foot in the shoe with the toe warmer on top. This is the 45 North Ragnarok. It rides like a good mountain bike shoe. It's, uh, it's light, it's dynamic, it's cool, it's, it's, uh, it's reflective, which is cool when you're riding at night. All right, well, we're gonna go do a ride. Let's, uh, let's get warm and then hit it. So this is literally single track that you'd be riding in the summer um, or the other three seasons of the year. It happens to be covered in snow right now, so this is one style that you're gonna get fat biking. Another, another type you might see is uh, snowmobile trail. So picture, you know, 10 feet wide, and this is where the snowmobiles are gonna rip through the forest. 
So that's a good way to get some wide open, just like long endurance miles. And then another way to do it is traditional fire roads. Uh, so here in Vermont, we are blessed with more gravel roads than there are paved. Um, in the winter, they're often covered with a nice, actually tacky layer of snow. And that's another way to get some, some good miles in. But this is definitely the most dexterous area. It's, it's literally cross country mountain biking. Yeah, it's so, it's beautiful in here. There's no one to bother you. It's just wide basically trails for miles and it's really pretty because I think you're riding and stuff that, yeah, you might be able to mountain bike here, but also if you're riding some snowmobile stuff, if they pack it down, you know, I've, I've definitely like hiked and stuff. You can, you can get good traction on there. If you wouldn't be able to do that necessarily in the summertime Correct. where a snowmobile goes, it's going to be all high grass and stuff like that. But on the fat bike, you know, because they tamp everything down, that's like primo. Spoken like a, like a proficient fat bike. Like a true fat biker right now. So this is what you're talking about when you're talking about the slow speed stuff. Yeah, I say you're never gonna have as much fun as you will fat biking at super slow speeds. Yeah, cause we're going like three miles per hour right now, but it's super, super pretty. And I'm still getting in a pretty good workout here. Absolutely. Honestly, it feels like a strength workout every time I get on the bike, but yeah, I mean, you run, you're running lower pressures. You're able to grip. It's super damp out today. And yeah, just go for a rip. I think the thing that's interesting is you've got a suspension fork on. I don't. But the tire is doing this all the time with the snow. So you think, oh man, I'm solid because I'm climbing slowly and I've got a lot of grip and I've got all this momentum with these big tires and this huge contact patch in the ground. But then you start going downhill and like everything's in the tire going all over the place. 100%, yeah, there it, it is such a wild ride, literally and figuratively. Uh, studs and conditions like these, completely unnecessary, but then, you know, if we were to roll out onto an icy road, that's where these things would allow me to take off. Yeah, bite in, bite in for sure. All right, cool, so we're gonna continue on this journey. Let's mosey on through the woods. All right. As I get out of the shrubs. If you're going to go off trail, someone's gonna need to break the snow. Yeah, exactly. You gotta have somebody literally blaze the trail ahead of you. Uh, sometimes it takes two, three, four passes of the bike to get through, um, which opens up a whole conversation on etiquette. That's the kind of stuff that you're gonna wanna do in your backyard. That's the kind of stuff you wanna do in an area that you know uh, there's gonna be traffic immediately behind you. Yeah. Because if you're gonna open up one lane of traffic or two lanes of traffic, and then you gotta be looking at the forecast the next day it freezes over, there's a trail just like this. And you know that from the cyclocross world, like yeah. when there is a rut just the size of one tire, that, that's gonna make for a troubling day. So, something like this, we're gonna go a little bit off course. Uh, I'll blaze a trail for you and, and you'll, you'll knock in the second round. I love it, all right, you hit out and we'll, uh, I'll follow you, but it's significantly harder, I think. Grab my trail. It is a lot easier behind you, I'm not gonna lie. Oh good, I'm glad I can do the hard work for you. <laughs> people on these other trails have already snowshoed them in and then probably people have fat biked them or snowmobile or whatever, but yeah, it's definitely good to have it tamped down. But if you're riding in the front, it is definitely a big workout. It is, it's almost like a strength workout. You know, you're always pushing a bigger gear. And, yeah. and I mean, like we were just talking about, it's like, you're, you're slightly out of breath, but you're not actually pushing that hard. You're not going that hard. You're not going too deep. Yeah, let's talk about working out because you're not doing 40 20s on your, on this bike necessarily. No, sir. I mean, especially this time of year, um, you don't need to be going super deep. Um, so it is, it's conducive to the fact that fat biking really plays well with zone two, zone three, endurance, tempo work. Um, pushing anything harder than that, especially on terrain like this, you just, you're never gonna find anything consistent to get a really regular workout. So you almost just play the terrain. Like you got a little uphill, yeah, you do a little tempo. The rest of the time, you're just, you're playing in the snow. This is the way that you stay fit in the wintertime. Something that I haven't done a lot of, but you you use it as a training tool. I totally love fat biking. I mean, you know, 
pro racing, been there, done that. And now I'm on to doing different things on two wheels. And it's all about having fun on a bike. So diversification, variety is the spice of life. It's, it's uh, some Nordic skiing, some Alpine touring, a lot of fat biking uh, this time of year. Yeah, yeah, it is definitely a nice way to be outside, to be amongst it and to do something different, not on the roads. There's no way you could ride on the roads in these with this stuff that's going on here right now. Definitely not on a day like today. What do you got coming up for your season? You've got a lot of you got a lot of events planned. I know you guys have something big coming up too. Yeah, we got a, we got a busy, uh, call it race calendar, but way more important than that, super excited about having our first child. We have a daughter coming in March. So that is gonna be the, the, the chief priority of the year 2020. Uh, soon after that, Rasputitsa is on the race calendar. And then from there, yeah, it's a, it's a full, on, full on season. Yeah, you're gonna be doing events all over the country and world. Yeah. You've done a lot of them already, but definitely one of the pioneers in this new wave of gravel and expedition riding and racing. It's crazy, man. Gravel, it's a thing, it's taken off. <laughs> it really is, it really is. Well, I wanna thank you for taking us out. Today was beautiful and really appreciate you taking the time to show us around this beautiful area of Vermont that you have. I look forward to seeing you this spring and summer and thank you again. Awesome, thanks for making the trip, Jeremy.